Okay, welcome to our next video, part two uh, in our series on Microsoft Forms and Power Automate. In this video, we're going to go through getting the form and file data from that submission into our flow, sort of understanding the structure of it because it's somewhat important, not critically important, but it is good to know how the data is put together so that you'll understand how to work with it later. Um, and do more things with it. So the first thing to understand is that the response data that comes in from that uh, form is going to be in this format called JSON. You've probably heard the term JSON or seen it or, or uh, might even know something about it or be an expert in JSON. I am not an expert in JSON. I only know enough to do what I need to do with it. Uh, but it basically for those who aren't terribly familiar, it's a, an acronym for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's simply a way of structuring information. So it's not a programming language or a scripting language, it's just a way to arrange data in a logical format. Um, and you'll, if you start working more and more with um, Power Automate, um, and, and also if you work with SharePoint and list or library formatting, you will become somewhat familiar with JSON over time because that's how all of that works. That's the, the glue behind it. But basically in JSON format, you have what are called key and value pairs. Keys are sort of the named properties of the data and the values are the data that goes, that's associated with those keys. Just to show you a very, very simple example, this is actually a subset of the JSON that's returned from a file upload question in a form, uh, or I should say in the response to a form. We have a key called name, and the value in there is going to be the name of that file. So if the file were document1.docx, then this would say name colon document1.docx link is going to be the URL or pathway to get to that file. ID is going to be a GUID or globally unique identifier for that file. And there are there are more properties than this or more keys and values in a file response, uh, file upload response rather, uh, that we're not showing here. But just understand this is how it's structured. This is the format of it. And also when you're working in, in JSON, the square brackets at the start and end here indicate that what's inside this is an array. So basically when you have the data from a file upload question, because a file upload question can have up to 10 files when you're configuring your form, you can decide whether you're going to allow one file, two files, all the way up to 10 files. Um, even if you specify that the question is only allowed or that they're only allowed to upload a single file, the data is always going to be returned as an array. Uh, and that's just because it, you know, Power Automate needs to account, or I should say forms, needs to account for the fact that there could be more than one entry there. So there is no case where you're really going to avoid having to deal with this array of data, or at least the array format. Um, and as we just saw in that sample, it contains name, path, or URL, and some other bits of information that we might need. What we need to do, really, in the flow is perform a function or an action called parsing. And parsing just means go through this JSON data to return the named properties so that we can then extract the values associated with those properties. Uh, and we're going to then use that data in a get action to get the file metadata or get its contents later in our next video. Um, so the last two here we're, we're not really going to get to today, but I just want to make sure that you know that that's sort of the next step. So once we have the JSON, once we have those pieces of information, we can start working with them in order to get the data we need. So just to show you some uh, kind of first first-hand example of this, we're going to go into the flow that we built last time. And I'm going to look at the run data for a flow run. 
we can see that if we open the response details, now the outputs here are formatted very friendly, but if we look down at the body, this is actually giving us sort of a preview of what that JSON looks like. So we can see there's the, uh, because it's, again, indicating that this is the, what's next is in JSON. We have the curly brace, and then we have a property or a key called responder, and the email of the responder, and we have the key called submit date, so on and so forth. Now, if we look down at the last row here, this is the internal identifier for our file upload question. So um, basically when you create a file upload, when you create any question on your form, uh, the name that you give it, the, the, the question or the, the text that you type in does not become the name of that column. It assigns this um, sort of seemingly random string of letters and numbers as that name. Uh, so what, what you're going to do is basically look at this as the response to our file question. And if we then scroll across, we'll see there is that um, JSON. Now it's throwing in some, some backslashes here, which we don't want. Uh, but what we actually want to do is in this question response, so what file you're providing, we're going to copy all of this text because that is the format we want to use. I'm just going to highlight all of that and control C to copy it. So now to parse this data, to parse that JSON, we need to add an action here. So what I'm going to do is I went into edit mode. I'm going to add a step and there is actually a, an action specifically called parse JSON. So if you start typing that in, locate it. Now, what do we want to parse? What JSON do we want to parse? In this case, we want to parse the response to the file upload question. So that thankfully in the dynamic content navigator here, or dynamic content selector, we actually see the, the name of or the text associated with that question and not that internal identifier. So I'm going to say we want to pull from the what file are you providing response and schema is the structure. So because JSON is simply is a multi-purpose data structure language or data structure format, uh, we need to tell it how this data is formatted. So what properties are there and how to extract them, you know, how to differentiate one property from the next. And we can do that by using a sample. Um, I don't know anyone who would simply type this schema in. You could if you really know what you're doing. But more often than not, you're going to copy the response details. Click this Generate from Sample button and then paste that in there and click Done. So it takes that the sample data and says, oh, OK, you are parsing an array of data that contains objects. And the properties of that object are the name, the link, the ID, the type, the size, a drive ID, a status, an upload session URL, etc. So basically, that's what's happening here. So if I hit save, and I'm just going to rerun that previous version of the flow, one or a previous run of the flow, just so we can see what data comes out of this parse JSON action. So I'm going to open up that old flow run again, and we're going to resubmit it, and. As you probably already know, when you resubmit a flow run, it basically reruns it with the new things that you've added. If it can, there are cases where you might have a problem if you've added some connector that wasn't there originally, you will have some issues running, rerunning that flow or resubmitting it. But if I now look at our parse JSON action and the output of it, and and click the show raw outputs and it will kind of spit that information out into a little bit more easy to read format. So we can see now it's it's giving us the body and inside that body we've got an array of attachments. In this case there's only one but again because it could be more than one it has to treat it as an array. So now we have the name, the link, the ID, the type, etc. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to show how to use these, um, basically use these pieces of information to get that file. 
uh, as well as you know to get the information about the file and also to get the file content so that we can then do something meaningful with it like attach it to a SharePoint item as an attachment or send it as an email attachment or upload it to a SharePoint site or save it to a OneDrive folder. Uh, all of those things are possible once you understand how to get this data and how to then use that data to get the file information that we need. But we will jump into that in the next video. So tune in for that uh, in the near future. Thanks and have a great day.